Hey guys, this is me Kirby Masters 87, and today, I will be ranking all the maps from Star Wars Battlefront 2 2005 worst to best. But before we start, I wanna say two things. First off, if you have a different opinion than me, that's cool as long as you don't bash mine. And second but pretty much the last, I will rank these levels based on their design, playability, and overall how fun they really are. So without further ado, let's get started. At number 19, I have Jabba's Palace. Now how can I explain why this is my least favorite map in the game? I will tell you why. First, the level feels very boring and bland. Second, the level is always a fight to see who can have three command posts the longest. And the thing I hate about the map the most is those Gamirian guards. Good god are those enemies annoying. They can almost instantly kill you if you are not careful enough. The only positive thing I can really say is its references to Return of the Jedi and well, that's it. Anyways, we will move on to the next one on the list. At number 18 is Dagobah or should I say Dagobaryu. Ha, funny. Anyways, the reason why it is above Jabba's palace is because there is not any game re guards for this level which means you will only have to fight the opposing team. But let's get on to the problems with this level. Yoda is playable in this map but I don't like to play as him mainly because he is very slow and is personally not fun to play as. I would prefer to play as Obi-Wan or Luke Skywalker instead of Yoda. It is also blind like the last map we talked about. But there is one cool easter egg, if you play the map on the Clone Wars, you will see in loud in the map, but if you play the map on the Galactic Civil War, you will see an X-Wing, now that is pretty cool. But for the most part, there is nothing to talk about so let's move on to the next one on the list. And number 17 is Felicia. To be honest, I really found the map to be yet again another bland and boring level to play. The reason why it was above the other two levels I talked about earlier was because this level uses vehicles and the fact that there is higher ground. Not like I wanna be like Obi-Wan when I grow up, or anything. But that's basically all there is to this level it's basically Dagobah with vehicles and that's it. On to the next level we go. At number 16 is Naboo. Out of all the remakes in this game, this one is my least favorite of all the remakes. This level is very terrible. For one, the level is blind just like the last game. Second, the map is pretty much going in a circle which gets very annoying. This is mostly because the enemy team is always trying to capture the command posts. Sometimes, it is always a showdown between me and 10 units on the enemy team. That's the biggest problem. Not to mention the party in the corner of command post 3. Gee, that's pretty good AI game. There's not much to talk about in this level so let's head on to number 15 on the list. Burger King Foot Lettuce The last thing you'd want in your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus, but as it turns out, that might be what you get. A 4chaner uploaded a photo, anonymously, to the site, showcasing his feet in a plastic bin of lettuce, with the statement, this is the lettuce you need at Burger King. Admittedly, he had shoes on, but that's even worse. The 14th spot on the list goes to Ender. Now the sole reason why Hoth was on 15 was because it just didn't feel as fun as the last game's Hoth and they got rid of the tunnel that leads you to the shield generator. But the reason why Ender is number 14 is because it's not as bad as the first game's Ender. Good god that was awful. But for some reason, I tend to have more fun in the map than I did in the last game. But there is one big problem, the Wokes. Seriously, these guys are way too easy to kill. Even the Janosians were much more menacing and harder to defeat than these baby bears. But to be honest, I'm very disappointed in Pandemic for not making new maps for the Rebels and Empire and give the new maps for Republic and the CIS. I would have loved to see a much more improved version in or instead of a rehash. Number 13 on the spot goes to Moss Eisley. Now this is a lot better than the last map we talked about but this level still is kind of mediocre. This level has still not learned from its mistakes from the last game. And the worst part about this level is the remove the add in that ST for no reason at all. Though I would understand why it was removed. I guess the level was too crammed. 
And that's another thing. The level feels crammed and bland. Not boring and bland but crammed. Anyways, let's head on to the next one on the list. Number 12 on this list goes to Polis Massive. Now that we have finished the levels that seemed bland, let's go on to the maps I kind of like. To be fair, its biggest flaw is that the droid and rebels will always capture the third command post. So I think it's a good idea to bring in Yoda for the Republic or Palpatine for the Empire. Not only that, I also question what happened to the Republic and Empire's vehicle. Why is it just the CIS and Rebels vehicle? It just doesn't make sense. One positive I will give it is that the level is pretty fun for heavy class mains. You can destroy multiple waves of enemies with this bad boy. It's pretty fun doing that. But for now, let's head on to number 11. At number 7 11. Yes, I wanted to say that. So yeah, number 11 is my Jito or should I say my Ido? And that is another big funny joke. Anyways, this level is pretty much the Bispin platforms of Battlefront 2. But there is one problem with this map. It just doesn't feel as fun as Bispin platforms mainly because just like Naboo, you play this map multiple times during Galactic Conquest. Another issue is that this is the ad Mundi's only level in the game whereas Obi-Wan is mostly used. But I will give it one thing. This is in fact the first mission in Rise of the Empire. Not the Genosis one because that is a tutorial level. I also had several times enjoying the level as General Grievous. Why? Because the Confederacy of Independent Systems is my favorite faction so back off Rebel Virgin. Anyways, let's go to number 10 on the list. At number 10 is space. Yes, just space. In fact all the space maps. Why? Because all of them play the exact same. Anyways, yeah. Most of the people really like to play the space battles in this game. I for one love them. However, there are some issues with these levels that only put the whole list of space battles at number 10. First, most of the space battles I had ended most of my deathless streaks. And why do I keep dying? Spam missile, auto turrets, trying to find a safe place from the enemy team trying to blow up the enemy ship, etc. Good lord. And another problem is these can get repetitive after a while. But that's all I can really say about the space battles in this game. Now to number 9. At number 9 is Yevine 4. Out of all the maps they remade from the last game, I can personally say that this is the best one out of them all. This actually feels like a map from the last game as it feels nostalgic and fun. How do I feel it that way? Well, good question. I actually like how the temple was still fun to capture. And the dry pools bridge is still good looking in the sequel. I also tend to have a lot of fun tricking off slopes with the vehicle I use in the level. But that is really all I can say about this level. Oh well, on to the next level we go. Number 8 is Utapa. Now one reason why this is on number 8 is because of the meme hello there personal classic as it was on this planet. I also like the level mainly because it's just fun rolling around as a vehicle taking down enemy reinforcements and just tossing off my vehicles and staying alive just for fun. Obi-Wan and Grievous are also here so that is another point in my book. I also love this melee design. Just beautiful. Anyways, that's all for this map so let's move on to number 7 on the list. At number 7, we have the Death Star. For this one, I really love this one. The level feels like a maze and I love it. The multiple variety of stuff you can go to is out of control. There is the garbage compactor, the laser that destroyed Alder. Rest in Phil Bay. And there is more but I don't wanna die down deep in there. But pretty much the thing that bothers me about this level is the horrible balance between the factions. Republic and Rebels will lose reinforcements and you would even notice because you were playing as Obi-Wan or Luke Skywalker for way too long. But that's all I can really say for this level. Anyways, let's head on to number 6. Number 6 for this list goes to Genosis. Now we are getting into the maps I have a strong heart for. This level is just so good for sniping. The level is very wide and has highly improved from the first game's Genosis. For one. It actually is easier to beat this level as Republic as opposed to the first game. 
too, it was made from the ground up. Thank God we didn't get a rehash unlike Hoth or Ender. And 3, this is coming from my favorite faction in Star Wars. The CIS. The only negatives are Count Dooku is only in this map and nothing more. I guess his work in the last game really paid off so he was demoted to only one map in the game. Another problem is where are those Techno Union ships? Maybe the CIS had a low budget so they got rid of it for this map. Anyways, that is all for now. We will now meet up with number 5 on this list. Alright guys, we have reached the top 5. To start it all out, Cash Link is number 5. I love this map. But sadly, this is the last map on my list that has vehicles. Now me, as a guy who loves summer I love swimming. I really seem to like beach levels in video games. Such as World 4 from New Super Mario Bros. as an example. I also love being a tank bully in this level. The only issue is the mines. But I guess the reason why there are in the map is because the level needs to be more challenging. That's really all for this map so let's go on to number 4 on this list. Number 4 on this list goes to Kamino. I personally cannot believe that the Republic has the best faction based planet even though I love CIS the most. Anyways, I most in love the level for Robin Wan and the rain. And seen here is my CIS strategy for Kamino. I go to command post 3 as a sniper and pretty much try and capture command post number 3. After I do that I basically guard it for the entire map by laying mines to the entrance door. Another good thing is the turrets cannot be fixed once they get destroyed, they are gone for the rest of the battle. And at the end of the map, I sometimes roll in as Django Fett to hunt the last troopers down. And well that's my strategy. Anyways, let's head into the final 3. Now we have reached the final 3. And to start the big finale, number 3 is Tanda 4. I most in love the level for how small and chaotic it is. This is basically Jabba's palace but more fun. It's really fun to roll in as a shock trooper and lay mines everywhere like it's no one's business. I just like it. So what you're seeing is my Empire Tanda 4 strategy. I first head to command post number 3 right after I spawn on command post number 4 and then once I captured command post number 3, I go on a murdering spree and kill all of the enemy reinforcements. Just look at me killing all of those rebel scums. This is the whole reason why I love this level. And another reason why I love it is because it looks so relaxing. But that's all I have for this one. Now we shall move on to number 2 on the list. And now we have the runner-up, Kuruskin. Just looking at the outside of the map looks very beautiful. I also have fun with this map with all the factions. But this footage you are seeing is the Empire Kuruskin strategy I use. First, I spawn at command post number 3 and make my way to command post number 5. There is a trick on capturing it. Just hide behind the walls and you're golden. After I completely capture the command post, I set up mines to stop the rebels from entering. Those pesky rebels they are. And then if I have the nerve to take over command post number 6, I usually lay mines on the command post so the rebels have a bad time. And that's my strategy for Empire and Republic. And now, let's head on to my number 1 favorite map in the game. And finally, number 1 is Mustafar. This level is just so good. Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Darth Maul all have a purpose in this level. The level design looks gorgeous and awesome, and everything else looks magnificent. So, are there any flaws? No. There are no flaws to this level. It is pretty much the perfect level in Star Wars Battlefront 2. And now, time for some Darth Maul gameplay on the best map in the game by yours truly, Kirby Masters 87.
Well guys, that's all I have for today thank you for watching this video. It took a while to do. If you are willing to see me rank every battlefront one map, I don't know, comment? Anyways, see you in the next video.